This program contains adult content. Hey, is there a God? A uh, big atheist. Really? What am I, an idiot? Come on. But yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. But it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true that religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody. It's not human intelligence. If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? Welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Tuesday, February 20th. This is episode 195. My name is Dan Illis. I'm Ryan Duffy. Ryan Ryan Duffy. Damn oh, it. fuck. <laughs> and Matt's here with us. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> uh, what have you guys done over the last week? I haven't done shit. Oh, I've been packing up a house to move, bought a new house, had a, the furnace break. Yeah. Yeah, everything's going great. Well, that's right. Your furnace went kaploop, kaploop. Yeah. Yeah, last night, getting ready to go to bed and kind of like, it's cold in the house and it's kind of like we're talking to each other. We're like, I'm like, I... Have you heard the heater kick on lately? I'm like, <laughs> no, I haven't moved the dial. And I'm like, it's not turning on. You have one of the old thermostats with yeah. the little thing you slide back and forth, or so, is it a dial? It's a the old one, the slide one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's being changed out too. Yeah. But yeah, so it's kind of like, huh, like grab extra blankets tonight. Did it get pretty chilly? It was a little chilly in the house. I mean, I checked the thing because it's got the little mercury switch in it. So when... You can hear it make a little click mm -hmm. when it hits like where it should be turning on. Mm -hmm. And this morning I turned it down. I'm like, okay, okay, 50. Oh, that's where it <laughs> says the heater should be turning on at right now. So that's probably how cold it is inside the house. Oh, boy. Mm. So you got to get a new furnace. Yeah, they're coming tomorrow morning, put a new furnace in. So we're raising the price of the house. Yay. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just to recoup that cost. Nice. And you found a new place. I did find a new place. Oh. So... Once my house sells, I can move into the other one. Woohoo. So good. Luckily, news. luckily I know the person selling the house, so they're cool with being like, Yeah, once you sell yours, you can move in. Awesome. So that's very cool. Congratulations, yeah. man. That's exciting news. Yeah. So I've also been boxing up everything I don't think I need for the next month. Yeah. What what is that? Like just like, you know, I got all my racks and stuff in my camera room. And I'm like, this stuff I you know, spare parts. Hmm. Uh Clothes I haven't worn in the past month or so, and swim just, trunks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like leaving the clothes out, leaving all the kitchen stuff out. Yeah, just packing stuff up, throwing old stuff away that I don't want to move with me. I fucking hate moving so much. Which is why I haven't moved until I realize, oh, I can make a chunk of money on my house. Yeah, I just I fucking my parents moved a lot when I was a kid, and I just I hate it now. Like. There's no move that exists where some of your shit doesn't get lost or broken. Mm -hmm. And then it's just sorting through everything and throwing yeah. a bunch of shit away and then getting to the new place and realizing that you need to get other stuff that you didn't have before. Yeah. And realizing halfway through making a bunch of boxes of stuff, I haven't labeled a, labeled a single one of them. <laughs> you didn't oh, label man. any of the boxes? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be fun. Yeah. It will be. It'll be like Christmas. <laughs> What's in this one? <laughs> oh. Except it'll already be a bunch of shit you owned before. Yeah. Well, so. at least I know all the little boxes are all my camera gear, and all the big boxes are pretty much uh, clothing items and household items that I don't think we... That we can do without for a little while. Yeah. Well, and if you're like most people, a lot of those boxes will end up in the garage or somewhere yeah. else and sit there for mm -hmm. a while, however many years until you get around <laughs> to unpacking them. That, that's what I've been, that's what I've been thrown away for the last week. I'm like, haven't seen this in five years. Gone. <laughs> yeah. We moved into this house three and a half years ago and there are still a lot of boxes that are just like shoved in a closet somewhere, yeah. put in storage, put up in the attic that. I don't even fucking know, like, all of the different shit that we haven't even unpacked since we moved yeah, in. That's where it's probably pretty much everything I haven't packed yet is all the important stuff I want to unpack. <laughs> yeah. Well, I figure that, you know, this spring I told Tracy I, I want to start going room by room and just doing some spring cleaning, throwing yeah. a bunch of shit out. And those boxes that I haven't even looked at or thought about for years, I ought to just take them and... Chuck oh, them. Yeah. Don't, them don't even a, open them up. Yeah. Don't even give yourself the option of being like, oh, I remember that. Yeah. Like, no. No, I haven't needed it in mm -hmm. however many years. You haven't needed or cared about it in right. how many years. Right. Yeah. So. Just fucking get rid of it. And you, Matt? 
I thought of a thing. Oh, oh, oh all right. Wow. Well, what I noticed was that you prepare sometimes for this little segment. Uh-huh. And I'm like, well, fuck, I could do that because, <laughs> um, but what I was thinking was like, nobody cares about my fucking boring, useless life shit. So <laughs> I could just do like a little section of whatever bullshit other fucking humans are doing to me throughout the week and bring that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, what are... I, I don't, I don't know if you guys know, you, you may or may not believe it, but like I don't do good with the human interactions. What? No. <laughs> I talk to you guys because we usually have like set up things to talk, discuss and talk about. I bring material that I'm prepared to do, mm -hmm. but like at work and in my everyday life, I can't just go around yelling at people all the time. So I just don't <laughs> say stuff, <laughs> you know? Well, you could, I guess. It yeah, I guess I could. Wouldn't be good. But I just choose not to <laughs> interact with them. Yeah. So one thing that's been on my mind this week is uh, uh, probably a lot of these will have to do with me not understanding people because <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Like, I don't get what the fucking point is. You okay over there? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Are you trying to breathe water again? No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to breathe. Jesus. <laughs> I just heard all this glur glur. Yeah. I, I heard a bunch of gurgling and then coughing and. I muted my mic. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, I probably just heard it in studio, but just checking on you. Yep. Making sure you're all right. So my like cough is trying to interrupt there. Matt's talking. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. So, so I've, I've brought two examples of interactions I've had this week mm -hmm. that just completely puzzle and stump me. So maybe, maybe you guys could help me figure out what the fucking point is. Okay. So the first question that was posed to me at some point during the week was <laughs> the first question. Well, it sort of is a question, but it's kind of a statement. It's just sort of a weird, just like, why would you even bother asking me that kind of, that's thing? what 90% yeah. of my interactions are. What the <laughs> fuck do you want to do with this? And what do you, how do you want me to respond? Do you even care about advancing the, the conversation? Are you interested in getting to know me better? Cause none of those things would be accomplished by either of these questions. Uh -huh. That's why I brought them. Cause they, they, they do, they accomplish nothing except for them to hear their fucking fat gums chomp. <laughs> so the first one is, a lady who's, you know, approaching 60 at mm. work, right? Mm. And she, she walks, she sits right next to me and she's super fucking annoying. <laughs> she coughs and clears her throat all day. Yeah. I counted it yesterday, 100 and, <laughs> 160 times. Are you what? serious? In eight hours. Oh, wow. Are you just making ticks on a piece of paper? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so she sort of stops on one of her trips by my desk and she's like, so your Patriots didn't win the Super Bowl, huh? Nope. <laughs> what What is the point of that? What do, is she a fifty eight year? I don't know how old she's exactly, but does she want to talk about how how running a three four defense is maybe a little bit risky against a zone blitz or against a zone blocking scheme and a, <laughs> and a RPO offense? Does she want to talk about that? I fucking doubt it. He should have asked her and she would have just, uh, 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 yeah. But I don't want to talk to her. Yeah. Or she should have just responded, I don't own the Patriots, so I don't know how. Yeah, that's They're not true. mine. Hmm. I, should have, I, w I should have said that. That would have, been, that would have fit. Hmm. So, so what's the point of something like that? It sounds Do you guys like have any idea? Like, first of all, I'm not, in, I'm not an approachable person. I don't know why she's... <laughs> Even try. What are you trying to do? See, that, do that, wanna... that might have been it. She might have been trying to broach a conversation with you, and the only thing she could thought to think to bring up is like, "Well, I know he likes that football team that lost. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that can start a conversation." <laughs> the perfect question that you should have asked her would have just been to turn around and say, "What is it about anything I've yeah. done in our interactions <laughs> since we've both worked here that would lead you to believe that stopping by my desk <laughs> and asking that question was a good idea?" And I'm asking only because I want to know because i want to make sure it never happens again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was it something i'm wearing is it my cologne today what made me what made me approachable yeah i i, I honestly have no idea i've spent all week thinking about these two things i mean this one and the next one but i i honestly have no idea does she really care no she doesn't does, does she does she does she really want to get to know me 
for some reason? No. Why would what nobody wants to get to know me? Well, I, like, I, try. I think there I think there's a large number of people. There's there's a there's a large percentage of the population who wants to be liked by everybody. Oh, mm. ah, fuck. So the vibe that I'm putting out, that's like, I fucking hate all you fuckers. <laughs> and there's cer a certain group of super insecure people that are like, I have to get him to like me. Yeah. I yes. just have to try harder. <sighs> <laughs> I can't win then. Maybe, well, maybe you could just extinguish that flame and say, look, I am not a people person. I don't like people in general. I'm not here <laughs> looking for friends. We're we're work acquaintances. If you need something work related, please stop by my desk mm -hmm. and talk to me about that. But my personal life is my personal life. That's that's how that goes. Way too many words. Yeah. I just <laughs> I don't know. I just she says that and I go No. Yeah, I know exactly what you are you know. Yeah, I can totally relate because damn fucking did that to me last week when I was in the office. Like I make it a point to go into the office and sit down in a cubicle as fast as possible so that nobody sees me to know where I am to come over and talk to me. Yeah. And we had left a meeting up on a different floor and came down to the main floor and I walked over to my cubicle and fucking, I thought that I could get in there fast enough because Damp always has to go pee after every meeting that we have and he sits there and squirms in his chair mm. and then by the time the meeting's over he's like every time oh god oh, i'm really glad that's over because I, I, my back eye teeth are floating i'll tell you what i really gotta go and it's like dude <laughs> nobody fucking cares yeah. or go I, to the bathroom or if i gotta go take so a dick often, shit <laughs> i gotta go take a dick shit yeah. like but then so, uh, so if it happens so fucking often pee before the fucking meeting yeah he i'm on my water pills and they're just really draining <laughs> me it's just running right through me <laughs> And so I thought that I could get back to my desk before he finished his business in the bathroom, mm. but I got stopped in the hallway by another coworker who wanted mm. to chat with me. And then by the time I got to my desk, I, I walked over to the desk and was just about to sit down when I heard the door open and I turned around and we, we met eyes and I was like, fuck. <laughs> and I never, heard, I heard never and sat eyes. down and put on my headphones real quick. And turn my back to the little entry to the to the cubicle, and I thought, well, okay, maybe even if he wanders over, he'll he'll see that I'm busy. I have my headphones in. Don't bother me. Yeah, None he, of that fucking works. Yeah, for he him. he doesn't seem like the person to pick up on negative social cues. Oh no, not at all. And so he came over and he started bothering me with shit, and I was, you know, he he came over and he said something or like knocked on the wall or something, and I turned around and. He said something and I just kind of pointed to my ears like, oh, I got my headphones in and I turned back around and he knocked again and I was like, damn it. So I took my headphones out and I'm like, yeah, what's up? So this is where you're sitting, huh? Like, what the fuck is that question oh about? My God. You're like, nope, I'm just popping a squat in someone else's stall. Yeah, no, I'm not really here. This is just a, a, an advanced AI of yeah. my Dude, don't, person. Dude, you couldn't tell that you were already bothering me, and that's <laughs> what you had to say? Yeah, so this that's is where the you're thing sitting, huh? that was so fucking important for you? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. Well, because we, we hotel at work, because I work from home most of the time, mm -hmm. and so the people who do work from home most of the time and have to go into the office once a week, you just reserve a cubicle oh, okay and then so and i make it a point to move around <laughs> so, <laughs> so that Sam so that i don't have you. a desk that he can know uh. that oh that's dan's desk that's where dan usually sits i pick a different one every fucking week so that he doesn't come over and bother me mm. but yeah I, so i i totally feel you man yeah and the second example and this one might be slightly different uh was when danielle first came back to work <laughs> um and one of my coworkers, different, same age range lady. Actually, this question came up twice. The same question, two different people. So is it is it pretty hard coming back to work and leaving your baby? <laughs> <laughs> you already know the fucking answer. What are you trying to accomplish? Making small talk. They want they want to socialize. They but, want to but, be your friend. But these are people. These are these are people who have no depth beyond bullshit small talk. Mm -hmm. They are personified small talk. I mean, that mm -hmm. reminds I mean, me and, of that. But but there's a control element in that one too, right? Because it's like it's so fucking obvious what the answer is that it's so unnecessary to even ask that now you get to make them say what you know they're already <laughs> going to say. And I fucking won't do it. 
I'm it's, not answering that fucking question. <laughs> it's, it's just like that little video of that kid on his first day of school where the, the news reporter goes up to him and says, you know, are you going to miss your mommy? No. And then he starts bawling <laughs> his fucking eyes out. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, the reporter's like, no. And he's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what that made me think of. <laughs> but I mean, but I just, I, I don't understand that. Like, like you, how, how much energy do you spend in a day? Try, I mean, for me, it's trying to avoid conversations, especially ones that are small talk. If somebody wants to come over, there's another guy at work. If he wants to come over and talk football strategy, which he does sometimes, great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll, that's fine. I'd love, there's some substance to that. There's, there's something to it. We can go back and forth, you know, make points and whatever. Yeah. But is it hard coming back to work and leaving your fucking baby? Fucking Whoa. get out of here. I think that's the, the <laughs> complete wrong way to frame that question. Because they already know the answer. Like you said, they know the answer. Yeah, she's totally. not happy to leave her new fucking born baby yeah. at home. No, I couldn't Maybe the wait. the question would be like, hey, how's your wife doing? I know she's going back to work today. Is there anything you need? Yeah. Might well, have been a way know. better approach because they already know the answer. Yeah, it's tough. Which, but she didn't even offer any of that. Yeah. She just, she just said that and that was it. That was all, that was all she wanted to say. That was all well, she had to say. Well, and it's like, you know, of course, Danielle's going to say, well, yeah, it's it's hard. And so in saying that, it's kind of like, hey, I want to remind you that you'd rather be at home. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just pointing out to you that yeah. you're not at home with your baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. And this this is the same lady that, will, like, when she I, – I helped train her. And so she would she would come <laughs> over to my do desk. A good job. <laughs> well, no. I, she would come over to my desk and she would be like, "Hey, so will you look up this for me and see what's going on with the, this claim or whatever?" And so what I have to do is I have to I have to open the claim in our in office software and then I have to go through a bunch of different pages and try to figure out exactly what's happening with it. Mm. And seriously, if I would click more than like two pages, which is a bare minimum that I would have to do on any problem, she would say. It's not just hard for me, huh? Oh. Fuck you. Give me two seconds and I'll tell you exactly why you're fucking wrong and stupid. God, no. It, that is, oh, it's hard for you. To, you can't even figure it out, huh? No. Bleh. She says that shit too. She, it's, it's like a control issue, huh? Right? Maybe she just goes yeah. to one page and goes, I can't find it. And let's go talk to Matt. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I'm off it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. That took way too long. I'm never going to bring that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally feel you, man. Tamp is the same fucking way. Like, what else can I do to make it clear to you that I don't fucking like you? I don't want to have to talk to you. We can work together fine. If if you need my help with something, I, I'd be more than happy to help you with something work-related. But we're not fucking buddies. We're never going to be buddies. Yeah. You should know this. I am an open atheist. I wear atheist shit all the fucking time. My lanyard is an American atheist's lanyard. I have stickers on my laptop. I, every now and then when he opens his fucking mouth about some political bullshit, will say, oh, well, that's weird. Have you thought about this? And I, I try to use the Socratic method with him and it just rolls right over. Oh, yeah. And like, he doesn't have any fucking situational awareness at all. Yeah. And it drives me nuts. That's where I'm lucky. I can just walk to my bedroom and take a nap. So. Yeah, you get you have a separate place from other people. Yeah. yeah. I can lock the door. <laughs> I can say I got to take a dump and just walk to my bedroom. Maybe I just need to become a manager and then I can close my door. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, maybe if I maybe if I don't leave my cubicle and take a dump. Ooh. Then nobody will be talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> then it will be the perfume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll just poop right here. <laughs> Any, do you need any more clues that I'm antisocial? <laughs> just, um, just put a load in your pants right in front of them. <laughs> just make that like grunting face. <sighs> that, that was fucking. That wet. was really gurgly. Yeah. Is that the sound you usually make? No, I just wanted Jesus. to make an over exaggerated noise. I don't make much noises when I poop. Besides the poop hitting the water. Oh. Well, I'm, not, I'm not a grunter. <laughs> But uh, on, a, on an unrelated note, <laughs> Easter's on April 1st this year, which I which find very appropriate. fucking hilarious. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think that's funny. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of anything. I've argued with a lot of people yeah. until I'm blue in the face on Facebook about guns. You're blue in the Facebook? Blue in the Facebook, yeah. Uh, and once again, it was demonstrated to me that it doesn't matter necessarily how nicely i speak to somebody 
how nice I am during our interactions. I was as nice as could be with this guy who I, I'm, I made a screen grab of something he wrote to me in response to a comment I had made and put us and posted it on my wall. Well, it was your first comment you made even like, it wasn't yeah. like in a whole string, like at the end of it, like a fuck you at the end. It was a fuck you right off the bat. Oh yeah. And I still was super, super nice to this guy. Wished him a good day, you know, not good day, sir, or anything like that. I was like, hey, man, I hope you have a good day. You know, we disagree. Whatever. I hope you have a good day. And he ended up blocking me on Facebook. Like, I was as nice as you can be to another human being on social media, aside from saying, hey, man, I'll suck your dick for, (laughs) for you know, five bucks or whatever. I'll pay you five bucks if you'll let me suck your dick. How's that? (laughs) Nah, he fucking blocked me. So it doesn't matter. He couldn't couldn't handle being wrong about something it just it do you think he thought he was wrong though yeah yeah he did i mean in in our throughout our conversation he was proven demonstrably wrong on a bunch of different things that yeah he was but saying. did he accept that did did he think he was wrong because I, yeah there were a couple times that he said oh, okay yeah my bad okay well but i'm well, still that's gonna thing, hold on still, to the thing yeah, yeah. i'm uh, but i'm never ever gonna let go of the main thing yeah he just kept t- moving the goalpost yeah. okay right, yeah, yeah so i was wrong on that but yeah exactly that's like the uh, the one comment i put where the guy said something along the lines of uh why ban guns when you can just easily take a plane and crash it and kill more people in one plane <laughs> crash than oh, all yeah. guns do in a whole year? Yeah, Cla- one plane crash, you can kill more people mm. than guns do all year long. And the- I'm like, what fucking plane yeah. crash is that? <laughs> so <laughs> I actually went and looked the numbers up. I'm like, okay, there's been, there was like 8,300 and some odd gun deaths, not including suicide, in 2017. So I brought that to him. I had, then I actually looked up, I'm like, what is the average number of people on a commercial airline? I'm like, well, these have 80, those have about 100, those have about 300. So I'm like, 150. Hmm. Call it 150. So I put in there, I'm like, okay, the average airplane holds 150 people. There's been 8,000 gun deaths. Oh, and by the way, here's the last commercial airline crash in the U.S. that killed 83 people. It hit a house, and it only killed one person in the house. Hmm. So bullshit on your hyperbolic statement of one plane crash and kill more people than guns do in a whole year. Standard AK-747 fallacy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then the people just keep I had one guy kept going on about stuff and goes, well, that's just your opinion. I'm like, no, it's not my fucking opinion. Oh, God. You can't, an opinion. you can't question my opinion. Yeah, they don't understand the difference between opinion and objective fucking reality. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a fact. This is something that happens. We can show you the numbers and the statistics. Yeah. Well, that's just like your opinion, opinion. man. Yeah. yeah. Well, then your fucking opinion is wrong because I'm showing you why. Yeah. Right? You know, I mean. Well, so so I just I made the comment. And I'm like, wow, what plane crash are you talking about? I would like to know, you know, what kind of plane crash kills thousands of people. Yeah. Well, it was me seeing your comment that I saw the thing. I'm like, I got to fucking post on this one. Yeah. You're talking I, about 9-11 maybe or something? Well, even 9-11 no, like, killed his, like 3,000 his repli- people. His reply to me was something like, well, it was just an example. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Okay. So you lied. You fucking lied about something. And I just, my comment was just, well, okay, well, if you have to lie to get your point across, maybe you should rethink your position. And or, then I made my comment. Or, he or says, is he just throwing stuff out there, like coming up with things on the fly? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was. Yeah. But then when I left my comment, he's That's like, so you just don't get my example, Ryan Duffy. <laughs> and I'm like, no, your example doesn't make fucking sense. Because your example is fucking bullshit. <sighs> yeah. So, people. yeah, I've just been arguing with people about guns over the last week. Uh, still installing electrical lights. Uh, we're recording on Tuesday instead of Monday because we had a big Snow. storm yesterday. Been out m- doing snow removal and Which shit like that. Which is probably why my fucking furnace broke. Do I have a lot more than you guys have? Oh, more? yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I got like two inches at my house. Oh, yeah? Yeah, The what you see out there now is after it's spent the whole day melting yeah. in the sun. Yeah, too, you got so. way more than I did. Yeah, we got a lot of snow here. Uh, I know when you texted me yesterday, I was like, because I was al- almost a banger, and I was like, really? Is it that bad? Oh, really? You were already this far? Well, because I leave at like 4.30 because I never know how traffic's going to be. Yeah. But then I was on the freeway yesterday and I'm like, shit, it's wide open. And I'm like, oh, because it's a holiday. Uh. Mm. So, yeah, I just uh. happen, I happen to make good time on, on it. But then I was like, oh, maybe it's way worse up there. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want you guys. Well, and then I knew it was going to snow more in the evening. And I didn't want mm. you guys getting stuck in shitty weather, either coming here or leaving and yeah. leaving at night after the show. So. Yeah. We postponed for a day. And that was a good uh, good idea, I think, cuz I would have been worried about you guys cuz I like yeah. you. And, and there stuff. was what 400 car wrecks this weekend? 
Uh, fuck ton. I know that I yeah. saw all kinds of headlines about kill more people in an airplane. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. I saw a bunch of headlines about how many wrecks there were over, yeah. the last, over the weekend because of the snow. Yeah. This is Dr. Dan, Matt's boss from the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast, and you are listening to the Godless Revolution. Oh, shit. Did I say revolution? I mean revolution. Bloody Americans fucking up the language. You can edit that, right, Spike? Father Zach? That's me. Hi. Hi. Thank you, Mong. This is my friend Alba. She's a world-class sinner, and we're uh, wondering if you got time for a quick confession. I haven't been to Mass in quite some time. <laughs> well, you're always welcome back. Can I just say, I thought religion was just a load of crap, but that was a pretty great set. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm so surprised how young you are. I thought priests were like, what, 90? Oh, we have one of those. Yeah, Father McCormick is our head pastor. I think he's pushing about a thousand now, but he's still killing it. I bet. Okay, um, I'm gonna head out. You're welcome to stay. Maybe God brought you here for a reason, too. <laughs> well, that's very sweet, but I brought myself here in a Porsche 911 Turbo. So tell God thank you very much, but I'm all set. I'm gonna go burn off some of that good karma. Have fun. Rejoining the Godless Revolution podcast now. All right, Matt, what you got for us this week? Uh, I got you Jeffrey Eisenbath. Jeffrey Eisenbath, that is a name that is not familiar yeah, to I me. I don't. Of Lincoln, of Lincoln County, Missouri. I'm thinking Jesse Eisenberg. No. No. No, no. Uh, well, he's facing three felony charges of invasion of property, invasion of privacy, and possession of child pornography. After hmm. a camera installed in the bathroom of Adrenaline Zone in St. Charles suddenly fell to the floor. The Oops. St. Louis Post-Dispatch reports. What is is he a senator zone? or a pastor? <laughs> pastor. <laughs> not pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a politician or a big field of grass? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Employees at the laser tag complex then inspected mm. the camera and found a video stored in the device that showed Eisenbath installing it in the bathroom, according to <laughs> Lieutenant Andy Binder. <laughs> oh, what a Never hit dummy. record while it's pointing at you. <laughs> Investigators later found thousands of videos during the execution of the search warrant at Eisenbath's home including covert recordings purportedly taken in bathrooms and other, uh, and others he downloaded from the internet. Eisenbath, who was arrested on Monday, has admitted to recording the bathrooms at the amusement center. Wait a minute. These are cameras in bathrooms, and his name is Eisenbath? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. He's in hmm. bath. He was doomed from the start, man. Eisenbath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is this a real story? <laughs> uh, he has admitted to recording... Uh, the bathrooms at the amusement amusement center and inside a bathroom near the sanctuary at Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Troy, where he volunteered Ooh. as a religious education teacher. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. So he's sort of a pastor. He's like a <laughs> he's on his way to molesting. He's traveling down mm, that road. Yeah. yeah. Um. This is a case where, uh, quote, this is a case where we likely have a lot of people that don't realize they're victims, Binder told the newspaper. He's the uh, lieutenant uh, investigating this. Oh, does he, <laughs> does he have a lot of women? <laughs> Binder's full, full of women. women. <laughs> ah. I got that one. We were just, well, because we were talking to Mitt, about Mitt Romney earlier. Yeah. <laughs> we are trying to backtrack and see if there were any other locations or potential victims, and we're asking anyone with information to come forward. The Archdiocese of St. Louis said the allegations against Eisenbach, if proven, are disturbing <laughs> and unacceptable. If proven beyond the video mm, we have of him, of him installing the fucking camera. Yeah. They said, quote, we are cooperating fully with the authorities in their investigation and will communicate with those impacted as we continue to learn more about the allegations. Notice that it does not say he's been dismissed from his position in the church. Ooh. Uh oh. The amusement center's official statement is what the diocese should have said and goes as follows. On behalf of the Adrenaline Zone family, we are deeply saddened by the news of the recent events and their potential negative impact on the community. If true, the, uh, the alleged events in no way reflect the values and standards we ex expect among our staff. We reassure that the accused employee has been terminated and we are continuing to cooperate fully with the authorities on all matters relating to this investigation. 
I love that they said the negative impact on the community, not on our business, uh-huh. yeah. not just to our customers, but on the community as a whole. Like, yeah. this is a bad thing for everybody involved. And after saying that, saying that they've terminated him, and then saying that they're going to continue to fully cooperate with authorities has a lot more value oh, than yeah. the diocese yeah. coming out and saying, oh, if it's true, then we don't like it. <laughs> We still trust him. Yeah. So he's a good, godly man. Doesn't matter if he's a pastor or not. He's still a piece of shit. Yeah. He's a piece of shitty pastor. Yeah. Like a cow pasture. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got for us? Oh, more. More, uh, more, more. Oh, this one could be fun. Not really more. I mean, that was related, but. Uh, it's time everyone recognizes the evangelical right as immoral, hypocritical racists. Yeah. Um, this is uh partly by Randall Balmer and partly by me. I mean, there's only been that idea around for the past couple fucking decades, at least. Well, it's time everyone recognizes it, though. Yeah. Uh, the religious rights wholesale embrace of the Republican Party and of Donald Jackass Trump, both as candidate and as president, has necessitated a rewriting of evangelical ethics. That, I don't think, I don't think it's that different. I, I mean, this is what Randall Balmer's saying. Did he, did he write... Donald Jackass. No, Trump? I did. Oh, okay. I did that. All right. <laughs> he had Donald J. Trump, and I'm uh, like, ah, I just, uh. <laughs> I hate the name so much that I'm not going to use it. Um, but here's a, here's a summary with annotations as to why it necessitates a rewriting. Uh, it used to be, uh, number one, it used to be that honesty was the best policy, but now lying is all right as long as it serves their purpose. Uh, yes, we know all about that business of not be uh, not bearing false witness. In the Ten Commandments, but that was a very long time ago. Can't we get beyond that? Truth and truthiness are overrated. After all, did it really matter that the birther nonsense was hokum? Not at all. It enraged those godless liberals and launched our brother in Christ, Donald Trump, toward the presidency. Uh, Our brother in Christ. Uh Mm. And all those websites fact-checking the president, claiming that he told more than 2,000 lies in his first year in office? Big deal. He's also pro-life, and he's trying to root out transgender folks in the military. So cut the guy some slack. Besides, that same website that tracks lying concluded that Barack Obama told 28 lies during his two terms in office. So there. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Uh, Number two, divorce was anti-biblical, but now it's no problem to be married more than, well, twice. Uh, Let's be clear here. We're not talking about polygamy, only serial marriages. Uh, The revision has been a long time in the making. Yes, Jesus said anyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Uh, through the 1970s, evangelicals ostracized anyone who was divorced, uh, divorced, let alone divorced and remarried. But then they decided to ditch a family man and fellow evangelical in favor of a divorced and remarried Hollywood actor in 1980. Once that barrier, barrier was breached, they concluded that, hey, if two marriages are okay, then why not three? Number three, love thy neighbor and your enemy. Nope, immigrants are scum. <laughs> we grant that Jesus said something about welcoming the stranger and feeding the hungry. And Leviticus says the alien who resides with you shall be... Shall, um, fucking goddamn Bible. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> the alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself. I don't know what fucking uh, version they have that says alien, but Mm. Uh, but our careful study of scriptural text has led us to conclude that the Almighty had Norwegians in mind, not Mexicans or Salvadorans. Oh, because they're white, right? Yes. Number four. Am I number four? One, two, three, four. (laughs) (laughs) If you swear, it's offensive and you have a poor vocabulary. Now, vul- now vulgarity is a sign of strength and, re- and resolve. The president's scatological comments about Haiti and African nations provided a welcome relief to the rhetoric of those coddling the so-called dreamers. As Robert Jeffress, pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, noted, Brother Trump was right on target. Mm. Well, he says what he wants. He's, he mm. talks like a real American. Yeah. Uh, number six, five. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely five. <laughs> White lives matter much more than others. Uh huh. Our political movement began. Uh, this is him. Sp- him speaking about the evangelicals. 
in the late seventies in opposition to desegregation. Um, although sleight of hand to persuade everyone, we organized to outlaw abortion and nothing short of fucking never mind. Let me start over. <laughs> Number seven. <laughs> Episode 147. <laughs> uh, on racial matters, we're also in, uh, indebted to our colleague, t <laughs> Tony Perkins. <laughs> Take 20. <laughs> Jesus, I know. <laughs> of the Family Research Council, who did business with David Duke, longtime leader of the Ku Klux Klan way back in 1996. So he took Trump at his word when he declared the ranks of white supremacists included some very fine people. Took him at mm. his word. Mm. Uh, Perkins also addressed the Council of Conservative Citizens, the Uptown Clan, uh, when he was a state representative in Louisiana. Therefore, we had no problem whatsoever with Steve Bannon or with the president's statement blaming the violence in Charlottesville on many sides, both the white supremacists and those demonstrating against them. We took the brother Trump at his word when he declared that the ranks of the white supremacists and neo Nazis included some very fine people. That's why none of us criticized him. Besides, he wants to jettison the Johnson Amendment yeah. to allow us to campaign from the pulpit while retaining our tax exemptions. Why would they want that? Right? Like, aren't, aren't, aren't they trying to be moral and ethical and honest and upfront? No, no, they want to they want to present an air of those things ah. while being underhanded, greedy, cheat, cheating lying, fucks. Scammers, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, yeah, they, they want the politicians in their pocket, just like the NRA. I mean, look at all of the big name evangelical preachers who have been caught with prostitutes yeah. or drugs or both or have cheated their parishioners out of money, have run off with female parishioners, left their wives, been remarried, gone to fucking prison. Yeah. Mm. The list goes on and on and on about what these people have done in the past, and it's, oh, well, he still believes in Jesus, so yeah. he's forgiven. Yeah. Jesus forgives him, so why can't I? Why shouldn't I? Well, I can't cast judgment on this guy, but those black people over there who are causing all those problems, mm -hmm. oh, my. Yeah. Jesus would be so upset. <laughs> or just how some of them have a billion-dollar estate, and they keep saying, we need more money, we need more money. Who am I to judge people aside from immigrants and homosexuals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, number six. Suddenly, there's no harm in spending time with porn stars. Mm -hmm. Once again, we have a precedent. David Vitter, the Republican senator from Louisiana and outspoken champion of family values, whose phone number appeared in the date book of the Washington madam. Heidi. What? Was it Heidi Fleiss? Was that her name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who continue to enjoy evangelical support. Regarding that messy situation with Stormy Daniels. Uh, think of the opportunities for the president to share what Franklin Graham calls his concern for Christian values. We're confident that as details emerge, we'll learn that the brother Trump was discussing his theological perspectives on human depravity and the second coming. Mm. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, number seven, they used to want to protect our kids, but now it's apparently all right for adults to date them. Yeah. We're not yet prepared to embrace pedophilia, but see nothing wrong with a 30-something attorney trolling a local shopping mall for teenage dates. Mm -hmm. After all, didn't Jesus say, suffer the little children to come unto me? Oh. <laughs> Roy Moore was simply being Christ-like. <laughs> Besides, he opposes abortion and asks for their, their mother's permission. Oh, my. And uh, finally, uh, no more it's how you play the game business. Now it's only the ends justify the means. Um, so to many Americans, too many Americans think of evangelicals as dogmatic and uncompromising. So they're, oh, oh no. so they're clearly eager to demonstrate, uh, to demonstrate that it's not my night tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Show note, Matt can't read it, it on Tuesday. It is not a reading day for me. It is a Tuesday, not a weird day. Too many Americans think of evangelicals as dogmatic and uncompromising, so they're clearly eager to demonstrate that when it comes to ethical standards, they can be very flexible. When the person that they are being flexible for is on their team, for sure. Yeah, that's the ends justify the means and, mm -hmm. yeah, all that. Yeah, they don't. Good fun stuff. They have no moral compass. 
They have no, they talk they about morality all the time and ethics all the time and Christ's teachings about being no. honest and trustworthy and a good citizen and helping your fellow man. And they betray that every fucking chance they get. Yeah. Like this writer points out, they're, they're more than willing to let Donald Trump slide with every other thing that they would well, have been up in arms about it had anybody who wasn't Donald Trump done. Can you imagine if Barack Obama oh, they, they had done even one of these things? They would have crucified him. He would have been oh, impeached. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he would have. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's not even just with the Donald Trump stuff. It's in their own house with, with pedophile preachers and the shit they let go on there and say, well, he's mm. a good, he was a good Christian man. I don't believe the stories that these people are saying. They're yeah. false. They're all lying. It's like, no. You know this shit happens. You're turning a blind eye to it. If you're really truthful about the way you believed in your fucking religion, you'd be like, no, that guy is bad. He is a sinner. He is doing horrible things. We need to get him out of this group. That's a weird phrase, isn't it? Turning a blind eye. I mean, like, if it was blind, you wouldn't, it wouldn't fucking matter where it was pointing. Yeah, you wouldn't need yeah. to turn it anyway. That's a good point. Hmm. Well, maybe because they're turning their blind, maybe they're turning their blind eye towards the thing instead of their. They have good sight eye. in one of them, and maybe blind it's in it's just like one. a pirate oh. with a patch on. They're turning their blind eye so that yeah. their good eye can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, that, I don't know. <laughs> that reminds me, uh, listener Riley Moore sent me a message uh, earlier today. Uh, where the hell is it? So she sent me in a message earlier today saying that she was screaming at her speakers, recompense, recompense, from when we had, she, she oh, was obviously oh. listening to the to last week's episode well, with we David, David word. Silverman, and he's like, what's that other R word? I can't <laughs> think of what it is. And I'm like, yeah, that fits. That could have been the word. Yeah. I, I wonder if that's what he was thinking of. Uh-huh. But the, just that he couldn't think of it, that, that just reminded me. Hmm. We'll have to ask. <laughs> or he, he probably forgot by now. He's doing a podcast circuit. I think he's doing like two or three a week. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. I saw another, I saw another show posted an interview with him the same day that ours went up and I was uh, like, Oh, they edit faster than I do. <laughs> feel like. But yeah, it was a lot of fun talking to him last week. Yeah. Had a good time with that. All right. Let's move on to some other things. Okay. Hi, this is David Silverman, president of American Atheists. Join us at www.atheists.org, and you are listening to The Godless Revolution. What time is it? 6 a.m. Why are we up? Well, because we've got a breakfast date with the Lord. Really? What's for breakfast? Well, there isn't any food, per se, but that's all right, because we are going to feast on this. Huh? I mean, come on, tell me that's not proof of God right there. The sunrise? Oh, well, it's not just the sunrise. I mean, look at those blazing oranges and those simmering pinks. Those brilliant reds. What do you think made those colors? My teacher said it's because of smog. Did God make smog? Uh, yeah, I guess he did. But I thought smog was bad. Let's, let's back up. Humans are responsible for smog, but then, you know, God made humans. So I guess God made smog and then turned it into a beautiful sunrise. So God kind of makes everything. Exactly. Yeah. What about trees? Yeah. Dogs? Sure. What about poop? Yeah, okay. Even diarrhea? You know what? Let's just leave it here for the day. Uh, yeah, let's just take a minute to gather our thoughts and for now enjoy the sunrise. All right, I'll stare at the smog. You and the Godless Revolution will be reassimilated in three, two, one. So there was another school shooting. We we've we we've kind of we we mentioned it kind of in passing earlier in the show when I, Ryan and I were talking yeah. about arguing with people on the internet about guns. I don't know what else has to happen. One of the things that I'm really encouraged about with the shooting. <laughs> It's, oh, as if you could, you could or should be encouraged by any school shooting or any shooting where people are killed because somebody else decided to drag out a, a murder weapon and just mow them down. One of the things that I find particularly encouraging about this are all of the students who are speaking up about it. Yeah. And organizing a March for Life next month. And publicly shaming politicians who have taken money from the NRA. 
But it, they've already, it's already shown the, po- the politicians don't give a fuck when they showed up at the, uh, the Capitol building in Florida today where there was a bill that was being discussed on the, uh, on a gun ban and a hundred percent unanimous voted it down. I think they need to, I think we just need to continue applying pressure. Oh yeah. And, and making sure that politicians know that taking money from the NRA and voting for guns and not doing anything to fix the problem is go, is, is going to have political consequences for them. Yeah. It's taken way too long and too many lives. The consequences, you know, the consequences of their inaction are that it's taken the lives of way too many people over the years that they haven't done a fucking thing about it and and have in fact made it easier for more people who shouldn't have firearms to possess and use those firearms at school shootings or at any kind of mass shooting. Yeah. Like it, Americans? Mm-hmm. Those, those, that group of people that shouldn't have firearms? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you always get them saying, it's my, my Second Amendment right. It's my right to own a firearm. It's like, okay, you have a Second Amendment right to own a firearm. It doesn't say what kind of firearm you're allowed to own in the Second Amendment. Mm-hmm. We've already made restrictions to the kind of firearms you are allowed to have. So if we go in and say, you are no longer allowed to own a semi-automatic weapon, you are not allowed to own a gun that holds more than so many rounds, you're still allowed to own a gun. You're still allowed to have a firearm. Well, in fact, it doesn't even say that. It says arms. Yeah. So let's give them all pikes. <laughs> yeah, give everybody a pike. You, <laughs> you, you're you, welcome to have this pike, but you need to. You can't take it to school or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Broadswords. Like the, Broadsword. like the, like the 30 pounders, like the huge heavy ones. Cause <laughs> you only get one swing. And if you miss, you're like, fuck, I can't put this thing and make another swing. It's too fucking much work. <laughs> um, I get, I get really frustrated that people who are so in love with their guns seem to view this as a, I need, I need access to every kind of weapon I want anytime mm-hmm. I want versus you know, they, they seem to think that they're, needs to be you can have all the guns you want anytime you want or no guns at all and i think i think that's that's ignoring the fact that there are some common simple regulations that we could pass that would make things better yeah they have they have a way of of shifting the focus from the dead children to then all of a sudden they're the victim Mm -hmm. yeah or they keep doing the stop blaming the guns guns don't do anything it's like we're not blaming the fucking guns. blaming guns for people dying is like blaming spoons for people yeah. getting fat, which is which yeah. is not the same fucking thing. It's like we're not we're not saying the gun did it. The gun was used to do it mm-hmm. by a person that had easy fucking access to get a fucking gun. If if spoons were the if, if the only if the only thing that spoons could deliver were unhealthy fattening items to your face, then yeah. it would be, then it would be a straight across analogy. And we should probably look at restricting those. Yeah. You know, as long as there are other utensils that deliver more healthy foods to your face, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, but it's not, it's well, not well, straight across analogy because spoons do much more than that. Guns don't. Well, I think that the better one with that now that people use all the fucking times is cars. Mm. Well, so many people a year die in car accidents. We don't restrict cars. Maybe we should ban cars. Maybe we should ban cars. Like, well, yeah, but a car's job is for transportation. Yeah, it has a different not to kill primary, people. Has yeah. a different kill primary people. purpose. I'm yeah. like, w- when a car is used in the proper manner, it gets you from point A to point B. A gun is designed to kill people. When it is used in its proper manner, it kills something. When it's used improperly, it kills something. True. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, you could use it as a hammer to ha- hammer in a nail if you wanted to, or uh, well, shovel your snow. That'd be an improper use of it. The thing is that all these analogies are apples to oranges that they try. They are. You know. You know. Then we should blame pencils for misspellings. No, uh, that that it's that's not even that's not an appropriate analogy yeah. because these these are tools, cars included, that are are made for something else. Yeah. Guns are made for killing. That's their sole purpose. That's all they're for. Yeah, I, I've tried using that argument with people, and they twist themselves in all kind of all kinds of fucking knots to get out of it. Because I'll say, okay, well, a spoon's primary purpose isn't to make somebody fat. No, a gun's primary purpose is to kill 
yeah. a person or anything. That's that's what a gun was created for. That's its purpose in being made. Mm -hmm. Well, not everybody has to kill somebody with a gun. And then you talk to that same person throughout a thread and you make arguments back and forth and they're like, well, what if I need to protect myself from somebody? I'm like, oh, you mean to fucking kill killing somebody? somebody the, the thing gun. that you said yeah. you didn't need the gun for yeah. because you're just a sportsman. You like to go hunting. You like to shoot at targets. So that's not what your gun is for. And now you're saying, well, what if I need to fucking kill somebody with it? Which is what we argued about 15 fucking minutes ago when you said, no, that's not why I need a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's my right to have it. And what I choose to do with it is my business. Right. Not if you're fucking killing yeah, people not, with it or yeah, somebody else gets killing. a hold of it and kills somebody else with it. Yeah. Then it's everybody. Then it's other people's business. But they set it up so that they, they frame all of their arguments into a, well, I have to have all of the guns or none yeah. of the guns. You know, the people on the left are saying that I can't have any of my guns. They want to take my guns away. Ultimately, it would be great if we lived in a society where people didn't have to have guns, where, where they didn't, yeah. where they weren't so insecure or fearful that they felt like they had to have a gun all the time and where they were more educated as to the harms that even owning a gun brings with that or even cared. Yeah. Even <laughs> cared a little bit that, that, that it does that. And, but the truth is I'm the only one on the left that says, get rid of all of them. I don't hear anybody else saying that and I don't have any influence. So fuck me. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I, I would be totally for more uh sensible gun laws and and whatever it doesn't matter if if we wanted to make it harder to kill innocent kids while they're going to school i'm for that if you're not for that you're a fucking prick mm -hmm. now i i do have a gun in my house that is kept in a place for home defense yeah and i actually had a friend the other day had someone trying to break into his house i was on uh, it was high as a kite but the question is is your house properly trained to use it no, I am though. <laughs> but my friend, for home defense. <laughs> yeah. To defend my home. Oh. Uh, but my friend, he's ex military. He was in the army and stuff. He said the guy was crawling through the dog door when he kicked the shit out of him. The guy went back out and then the guy tried to basically bust through the door. And he said he was sit had his body against the door trying to keep the guy from getting in the house mm -hmm. while his wife went and grabbed his pistol and called 911. He said he stood there with a gun. He said he racked it so the guy could hear it. Didn't fucking scare him. But luckily, the once the cops showed up, the guy took off running, and he didn't have to actually use it. But it's one of those scary things. This guy wasn't deterred about getting that guy the sounds shit like a total crazy person. Like it was, it was a crazy guy trying to break into his yeah, house. Yeah, because like when, people once, don't usually try to rob you like that. Once they no, know but, that someone's but, there, they they take off. But once not... a crazy guy tries to break into your house, what if he got in? What if the guy wanted to take it a step further? Once he got in the house, and my buddy didn't have a firearm to protect himself with, and was just going fists, or the guy had a knife. Does your buddy not have any knives in the home? Uh, no, he's a vegetarian. <clears throat> no. <laughs> Some of those vegetables are pretty fucking tough. Ah, you just boil them. No, I'm, I'm saying you don't, you don't have to have a gun. He could have had a dog is, is a better protection for your house. Not mine. He'll just lick you to death. <laughs> Super Bowl, Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm saying though that you don't need a gun for personal fucking protection. How, how often is this ever happened? No, that's what a condom's for. Yeah, how how often how how many times has his has somebody tried to break into his house? Well, this is probably the first time. Yeah. But he's had this gun forever just in case. Or it's just his target shooting gun. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't no. You no. You Okay, so he can have a gun for home protection, whatever, but we're not saying that you can't have a gun for home protection. We're yeah. saying that you if you want a gun for protection then Okay, great. Then you should have to perform certain things to ensure oh, yeah. that you are properly trained, know how to use it, licensed. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you've got a license for it. You go in for training however often. Let the cops know you have a firearm in the house. So if the yeah. cops have to come into your house, say, hey, we know you have a gun. Just let us make sure you don't have it on you. You have to have insurance. You have to mm -hmm. store it in a safe manner so mm -hmm. that somebody else who breaks into his house. I mean, let's say your buddy loves guns and has them just kind of all over the house. I've known people who just leave their guns. I had a buddy who'd just leave a gun on his fridge. He had one next to the dining room table. He had one in the nightstand. I mean, it was total fucking gun nut. He had them all over the place. Somebody crawling in through his dog door could have pulled the gun off the top of the fridge yeah. or next to the dining room table and killed everybody in the house. That doesn't make you any fucking safer. It, make, it puts you in more danger. To be killed by your own gun. Right. 
But there are simple common sense steps that we could take. We could reduce the number of rounds that magazines are able to hold. We could reduce the type of weapon that you can have. We can, we, you know, like we said, we, you can make it so that people have to have licenses and training and insurance, proper means of storing it, that they're trained. They have to register their gun. We have to keep track of it. Mm -hmm. All of these things would help ensure that people who shouldn't own guns don't have guns. Yeah. We can track uh, online sales, private sales, gun show sales, track all of those, perform background checks for all of those. These are all things that we can do, but the people on the right and the NRA and the super gun nuts are like, no, you can't, you're, you, you can't, don't tell me that I can't have my guns. And that's not really what anybody's arguing. We're not saying well, that you can't have your guns. Yeah. And you need to demonstrate that you're a responsible owner. But there also needs to be a universal database for them to use, because right now it's just state database. Mm -hmm. You're only checking state shit. But why would, I mean, that sounds totally reasonable to me, and why would people oppose that? It's a slippery slope. The government's yeah. going to start, tra it's all the fucking paranoid conspiracy bullshit. Thinking that, well, and, those uh, people shouldn't have them anyway. <laughs> you're it's, it's, you're yeah, absolutely right. It's, it's the people that think the government's yeah. going to come disarm me, and they're going to put me in a fucking camp at Walmart, and I'm going to be turn into a slave for the fucking Illuminati or some bullshit. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's an entire subculture part of this country that have the personality of Ted Kaczynski, Kaczynski and the combined IQ of Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> they get like a, a one one thousandth percent of an IQ. <laughs> he was smart, but he yeah, he was really smart. But or still is, I think he's alive. But spread is across he? that many people. Yeah. I think I think he's still alive. I thought, I thought Ted was. I just I get tired of Ted. the disingenuous arguments that I hear from people on yeah. the right. Like they're they're not interested in a conversation. They're not interested yeah. in trying to solve the problem. They're interested in keeping their guns yep. and and being yeah. able to get guns whenever they want. And that's it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear anything else other than you can have however many guns you want. In fact, we'll just send you a gun a month if that'll make yeah. you happy. And it, and it's all this and it's all this propaganda they get from the NRA because the the NRA would be affected by laws like that because then people couldn't just go buying guns whenever the fuck they wanted to. You know what I mean? There'd be a little bit of a process and they might deter some people. Some people would be turned away. You know, and all that cuts into the bottom line of the of of the gun manufacturers who somehow are connected to the NRA, I'm sure, and just kickbacks and who whatever's happening. Them, who send them tons and tons yeah, of money to whatever, lobby Whatever funding, somewhere there's money involved there. And it's not it's not money that's that's going to the right wing idiots that talk about this kind of stuff. They're being fed the propaganda from the people who stand to yeah. lose a little bit of money by not having fucking children dying in schools. Well, that's that, yeah. <laughs> Did you see the the anti abortion deflection video from the gun stuff? Uh, no. Where the guy the guy's holding up an AK forty seven. He's like, this gun has killed or these have killed X number of people in the U S. He goes, oh hold, hold on stop. That's Planned Parenthood that's killed the number of babies they've killed in the U.S. Like, what? Oh, yeah. Really? That, that came uh, out a while ago. Well, that was making the rounds yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And I got on there, and I made a, made a comment. I'm like, I'm like, well, f for one thing, a fetus isn't a person. That's what I got. Well, that's your, that's your opinion. I'm like, well, no, they're not. <laughs> legally, they're not granted person. A clump of cells is not a, a fucking, fucking human being. It's, it's not granted personhood. And he was going off the whole bunch of other crazy nonsense. But I said in there, I'm like. Yeah, you have a right to own firearms. Mm. That is your legal right. You want that right protected. Women have the right to an abortion. So why don't you protect that right too? It's like, well, that's an immoral right. Uh, so I want that gone. I'm like, oh. Oh, you're going to oh, argue morality with oh, me Oh, okay. And so I'm like, oh, so <laughs> you're okay with a law you disagree with going away or having more regulations on it. But you do not want anyone to talk about regulating your fucking guns. So are are the high schoolers who just got mowed down people? Yeah, but are they people? Yeah, but since they got birth, they don't matter. And the guy had a legal right to the gun, so uh, that's where I kind of was saying. I'm like, no, see here now, you can't bitch about someone saying they want to regulate firearms when what, you want to regulate women's fucking ovaries. What about mm. those? What about those high school kids' rights? What about their right to live? What, they, what, what about their right to go to school and be educated without worrying that they're going to get killed by some crazy fucking Republican in their neighborhood? Yeah, what about those rights? They weren't 18 yet, so these Congress people won't grant them rights. <laughs> they can't fight and die for this country, so they get no rights yet. The other thing that I've discovered... Oh, they'd send them to war if they could. <laughs> Probably. The other thing that I've discovered over the last week 
in arguing with people who are Second Amendment fanatics. Like, if there were a dildo with the, with the wording for the Second Amendment <laughs> written across only, it, only the first they part. would only just, the first half. There, there, there would be no in out in out with that dildo. It would just be shoved <laughs> right up their asses the whole fucking time, set on high. End of story. It would never leave their aura. And they would have a good smile. Not oh, the yeah. not the well regulated militia part. Just the right to bear arms. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they always leave out the well-regulated militia part because that that you know doesn't work. Or for them. what the defin- definition of of a militia was when the Constitution was written. Yeah. A- any of that? Any of those like things that taper it down at all? They're like, nah, none of that. Yeah. Just and and the other thing that I realized over the last week of arguing with people who are super super fans of the Second Amendment is at least from the sampling that I've had over the last week in talking to people who are very pro second amendment, very pro gun is that the vast majority of them are just fucking dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. They're really fucking dumb people. They're stupid, stupid people who don't know shit about what the fuck they're talking. They about. just want their toy. Yeah. They don't, they don't have any idea what the statistics are. They don't have any idea how the rest of the world even fucking operates. They're really fucking stupid, stupid people. Well, according to Alex Jones, they got their numbers right. Oh, yeah? Probably. I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing they watch Alex Jones and Alex Jones spew out some bullshit. Hey, and did they you know Charlie it. Manson's getting out? But they're, what? <laughs> but I mean, they're, they're very quick to jump to hyperbole. To lie to try to make a point, to create all kinds of fallacies. What struck me, I think, more than anything was just the number of them who are either really, really fucking stupid or really, really fucking dishonest in the way that they carry on these conversations with people because they just start throwing out random numbers and and weird, weird scenarios, weird statistics that don't make any fucking sense. And so when you, when you ask them gentle questions on it, they jump on you like a fucking cheetah in heat and it's, start shredding you to, <laughs> start shredding you to bits when none of the things that they've said are even fucking true in the slightest. Well, they just yeah. see a second amendment meme and read the shit out of it. Like the ones where they keep posting where it shows like Nazis in the street. Like, hey, this is what happens if we take our guns taken away. That hot piece right. ass Dana Lesh says that I should own a gun. And so I went and bought five. Maybe she'll fuck me yeah. now. I, I, I'm not even convinced half of them can read memes. Ooh. But they got pictures. I mean, you know, Dan's right though. I mean, they're not, they're, they're, you never, you never get into a debate about this with, you know, the physics professor of Caltech or something. You know what I mean? It's never those. It's it's always these hairy backed swamp developers, you know, from the fucking deep south or or rural areas, you know. Yeah. And but, and their argument is number one, it's my right. Number two, cause fuck you. Yeah. But I have gotten into debates with guys that I think I talked about it on here a couple months back, where I got into a debate at work with a few guys that are very pro Second Amendment, mm. and we got to the. I was able to talk them into agreements on. Yeah, okay, yeah, that doesn't sound a bad idea at all. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, I can agree with that. At the end of it, it's like, yeah, you get to keep your gun, and we all are agreeing more should fucking be done. Mm. And they, it, yeah, I just, I'm constantly surprised at just how terrible they are at making their points. It's like they 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 ran across a meme one time, or somebody told them one thing one time, that at the time to them made perfect sense and was an unassailable point mm-hmm. that nobody could ever disprove or say was wrong or inaccurate or point to something else that may be more correct. And they use that thing. And the, the particular thread that I'm talking about was, was on a, uh, it was somebody who's been a guest on the show, somebody who I really like and admire, I think is a wonderful human being. And is just, you know, creating dialogue around a lot of these issues. And a lot of the people that know this person or that he's friends with are just backwoods, dim-witted, dumb fucks who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And they lie about it to make their point. They don't know what they're talking about for the most part. And when you question them, and it doesn't matter how nice you are, they'll attack you. And it's like... Well, you're kind of making my point for me that you probably shouldn't have a gun because you're clearly disturbed and or stupid 
and violent. That's and, the, yeah, yeah, and that's violent. the exact wrong temperament. Yeah, for having a gun. Yeah, you're you're doing your side no favors in lying about your position or creating lies to help support your position, and then coming across as a deranged lunatic. Yeah, yeah, and, I, I, and I'm probably not going to be near the top of the list either, but I don't have any, yeah. and I'm not trying to get some. Yeah. What's well, that one of the guys on that thread even goes guns aren't even dangerous. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? But Muslims are <laughs> probably. That's where I had to th- I had to throw something there. It's like guns are are fucking dangerous. They're just as dangerous as what I say. I said I think I said swords, lawn darts, and crossbows. <laughs> I had to throw you, you should, you should have said well then. Well then, what did the school shooter use? Like a yeah. fucking super soaker or like garden? Because obviously, or if it's not dangerous, it shouldn't have harmed anybody. Yeah. And they would, and that wouldn't be the number one choice people use when they want to kill a bunch of people. Yeah, exactly. That that's the argument that I get yeah. more tired of more quickly than any other is. They can use a different. It's not tool. the gun's fault. It's it's the person behind the gun. And if they wanted to kill people, they'd find something else. And it's like, okay, great. When's the last time you heard of a mass stabbing, or how many mass stabbings have we had compared mm-hmm. to the number yeah. of mass shootings? It's a there's a reason people use guns. When they want to kill a whole lot of people yeah. because it's the most efficient and effective weapon for doing so. Yeah. Bas- I, basically, that argument is, well, if we can't solve it 100%, we shouldn't try to shoot for 50. Yeah. I, I actually had a face-to-face or, conversation know. with somebody who said, well, they can just as easily make a bomb and take the bomb to school. I'm like, whoa, hold on. How just ma- as when? easily? He goes, well, the, just as easily. He's yeah. like, all the stuff underneath your kitchen sink. And I'm like, okay, when was the last time <laughs> we had a, a school bombing? How often do we have school? But well, they happen all the time. But it's not in the news. I'm like, no, fuck you. Oh, really? Fuck you. When was the last time we had a school bombing? I'm like, I can think of three times in our history where we've had bombs. Well, four. I don't know if uh, Timothy McVeigh counts because he did blow up a preschool. In the McMurrah building. Fuck, sure, count them. It's not. It's so, still okay. not going to get anywhere yeah. close. So yeah. that. So <laughs> I, I'll, I'll count that one. Extend it as much as you want. Uh, there was the one in the 1930s where the guy threw a stick of uh, stick of dynamite into the school, which was actually the largest school massacre ever. Mm. Blew the one uh, the one one room school up. Uh, I'm going to put the Columbine kids in there too because they did bring pipe bombs pipe into bombs. the school yeah. with them. Mm-hmm. And then there was that case in, I can't remember if it was mid 90s where the guy brought a bomb into the school and, and blew up and it was like an elementary school. Mm. Those are the only four incidences I can come up with <laughs> going back to the fucking 1930s where a fucking bomb was used to blow up kids in a fucking school. Yeah. And one of them, the bomb wasn't even in the fucking school. They and weren't in, even, and he didn't even know they were there. That was the one thing Timothy McVeigh was sad about was that he killed the kids. He wanted to kill the federal employees. Yeah. He didn't know there was a fucking elementary school on the first floor. Pre, or daycare. A pre, yeah, daycare with all the kids in it. He didn't yeah. know it was there. And the Columbine bombs never went off, right? I don't know if any detonated. I don't think they worked. They didn't work? I don't think they worked, but. So in, there we in go. In any case, yeah, I mean. Three. One of them brought them. They didn't fucking work. There goes your, you can, anybody can make a bomb with the shit underneath their uh, sink. Dude, and, well, and yeah. the second you try to buy, like, some of those materials, I know he's talking well, about cleaning supplies, but. Cleans, but, yeah, but even Ampho. Ampho was readily available to people until fucking Timothy McVeigh filled a truck full of Ampho and, and fucking happened? diesel fuel. And, and then what the happened? Building. We decided, we made hey, it illegal. that should be a little harder for fucking right wing radical nut jobs to get their hands oh, on. Yeah. It, it, and all of a sudden, no more federal building bombings. Yeah. And what happened after a guy threw a stick of dynamite into a school? Hey, guess what? You can no longer go to your corner store and buy fucking dynamite. You have to have a fucking explosives license to get it now. Yep. So two those two incidences one time <laughs> happening fucking laws. <laughs> I think you're confusing incidents and instances. Instances. I'm fucking <laughs> on a rant. <laughs> but yeah, those two things right there well, happened he, once. Fucking outlawed. Well, and even a Columbine, they used handguns. They didn't have long guns. They didn't have yeah, they, AR-15s. They, yeah, they, they used handguns and they tried to make up uh, pipe bombs, which obviously. It got, I, yeah, and that I was two people over the span of several hours, yeah, and they right. had a lower body count than a guy with an with an AR fifteen. And high he school. was, I yep. think, and they said he was in that school for three ten or mi- f- ten minutes. But even the firing, it wasn't even going. Uh, it's, it didn't seem like a long time for the shooting to actually go on. Yeah, but even still, ten minutes versus hours. Yeah, and those kids in Columbine were walking around like mm-hmm. just up, oh, shoot that kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It, 
I don't know. I get frustrated. The, the, the two arguments that I get most frustrated by are they could use another weapon. Um, shit. And you mentioned it, man. I can't remember what the other one was. What are some of the arguments that we hear against? I'm trying to remember what I said. Uh, they could use any other kind of weapon. Uh, guns don't kill people. People with guns kill people. People, <laughs> people kill people. Fuck, I can't remember the other one, but there, there are, there are at least two arguments, and I, should I, I, oh, why, why do they choose guns then? Oh, yeah. 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 Why, why do they choose guns? You know, they, they could, if they were just going to use anything else. else yeah. yeah. It's the ease of access. Yeah. That, that it's just, the other thing that's really frustrating, especially with that conversation that Ryan and I were participating in, is it's like, Every person that started a new comment on there, like, you know, there's the main post and then people would comment and then there are sub threads where people are addressing the comment. But it's like every time somebody makes a new comment on there, they're repeating what somebody else has already said yeah. somewhere up the thread. It's like they don't even take the time to to acquaint themselves with the arguments that are being presented presented and rebutted. It's just, this is my opinion, and I'm going to tell everybody what it is. I don't care if it's been repeated or not 15 fucking times. Dude, they they haven't even finished reading the one-sentence amendment that they fucking love the best, <laughs> let alone a Facebook thread. They just want to get on there and, and fucking beat somebody up with a second amendment. I think it's actually closer to three sentences in there. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm I'm tired of having to have this debate we actually before we started recording this segment it was like god do we talk about we, it we do debated we, on talking do we yeah. do we address it and it's like yeah we should still talk about this stuff but i mean it's the same thing every time i mean it's just like every every couple few months we have the same conversation on one of the episodes because it's happened again mm -hmm. and we say the same shit and so what i mean what do we do is it is it that we don't talk about it every time it happens we just oh yeah another school shooting move on you know like I, don't, I get tired of fucking talking about it but i don't know what else to do i'm not a politician i contact my politicians i write letters well it's not that you're not a politician it's that you don't have pockets deep enough to pay a politician off yeah uh, maybe that's it you, I'm I'm very encouraged by the high school students. I don't think I ever fully got my oh yeah out, yeah yeah. But I'm very encouraged by how articulate and reasonable and and passionate these the surviving students are in Florida who are who are organizing around this and are shaming politicians for accepting money from the NRA and are organizing this this march and going on the news and talking about it and calling for reform and more legislation and more regulations for it and i'm hoping that they can actually get some things done I, I talked to tracy about it the other night and you know she said well if if nothing changed after sandy hook yeah when when you know all of those little kids were mowed mm -hmm. down why do you think it will change if it's high schoolers and i said because there are voice. surviving high schoolers that are articulate smart and motivated and i'm hoping they can be a voice for a new generation coming up that has finally had enough, enough of this bullshit yeah and they're really good with social media yeah yeah i mean i just i think um you know ryan's mom will have to take her head her earbuds out for a second. But <laughs> I think this is just going to have to be a yet another one of the problems that we'll have to wait for the boomers to die for it to go away. God, I hope not. I mean, I, the, well, the, I don't even think because there's still there. There are a lot of gun nuts that are younger that yeah. are coming up too. But I mean, you know, all the all, all of Congress, uh, most of the politicians right now are are baby boomers that that are clinging to this. You know, there's a huge base of gun nut baby boomers that are still trying to get back to Mayberry and they're not, they're not looking at what's really going on with guns in this country right now. They think like that idiot yeah. was saying earlier mm -hmm. that, you know, you should just be able to put a gun rack in your truck and drive away. That's not the world we're in now, you know? And so until, until you know, we see it, people so, younger than us are seeing it, but un until, until the right wingers of that generation, you know, Ryan's mom excluded, <laughs> As always, from all of my baby <laughs> well, boomer talk. Well, my mom's talk. not a right winger. <laughs> I know. I, I exclude her from all my baby boomer talk. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and when they go, things will become a lot easier. I sure hope so. 
it's just it's a growing sense of dread and despair. It seems to be happening more and more often, even. And I don't know. Over the course of the last four years, we've talked about guns. What maybe several times? Yeah, a lot well, of, a lot well, of times. several times for sure. But how often? Right? Like we didn't we didn't have to yeah, cover guns on every other fucking episode that we recorded. Right. And it seems like we're doing at least one once a month now. We've talked about mm. guns more than free will, I think. Probably. <laughs> well, for sure. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know, dread and despair I think and doom and with a glimmer of hope with the surviving students at Parkland. This is Natalie Newell of Science Moms and the Parenthetical Science Podcast. You are listening to The Godless Revolution. All right, Ben, sometimes a higher being doesn't always present itself to you in a church or a sunset. A spiritual experience can find you when you least expect it. Now, for me, it was the string cheese incident. Red Rocks, 96. They played for seven straight hours in 108-degree heat, a set so divine and filled with love that your little mind couldn't possibly grasp it through mere description. Luckily, big old Jimbo bootlegged it. It doesn't sound very good. Well, yeah, I mean, the speakers aren't great, you know? You need a woofer to really capture the essence of their sound. Some ketamine would help, too. Okay, you know what? When the glockenspiel comes in, you're really going to understand. No offense, but if this is God, I don't think I'm a fan. Yeah, that went well. Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. We agree with Pat Robertson on something. What? The Crypt Keeper? I'm, I'm going to wait to watch the video before I decide, <laughs> decide to say if I agree with him or not. Because <laughs> right, for all we know, he's going to say God told him this, and we won't agree with that. <laughs> this, this ties into the previous segment where we were talking about guns. Apparently, and we haven't watched the video yet, but apparently Pat Robertson believes that... Uh, a call for a ban on assault weapon on assault weapons <laughs> is sensible. So this comes to us from Right Wing Watch. It says that today on the 700 Club, televangelist Pat Robertson responded to the recent mass shooting at a high school in Florida by voicing his support for a ban on assault weapons and expanded background checks for gun purchases. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a gun owner. Robertson said, I've hunted, I've shot skeet, I have gotten awards when I was in the Marine Corps for shooting, I've got no opposition whatsoever to shooting, but for heaven's sakes, I don't think that the general population needs to have automatic weapons, it just doesn't have Russian-built or Chinese-built machine guns, it just doesn't. I mean, it's one thing to defend yourself with a pistol or a shotgun to hunt with, but it's something else to have assault weapons. I think we can ban those things without too much trouble. They have what they call bump stocks, which you hit it and it would go automatic. We can stop that. It's just got to be, Robertson said. It's sensible, which reminds me that we saw that opening for Rachel Maddow's show where apparently Trump is now mentioned that maybe we should get rid of bump stocks. The bump stocks and the uh, trigger cranks. And apparently he mentioned it in passing, but... Nobody really knows exactly what he said. This, it sounded like this was coming f as third party news. Well, and the thing is, is I bet that's all they will do. Well, they know they've got to do something, and they talked about banning bump yeah. stocks in previously when Vegas happened, and of course they didn't do a fucking thing about no, it. No. And it's not as if a bump stock was used in Parkland. It wasn't, as far as we know. I haven't heard there. I don't think there was. No, and so it's it's if if it's anything at all, it's it's a tiny little bit of something they can throw to try to appease yeah. people. Yeah. It's a cracker. But does Pat Robertson only watch his own network for news? Because <laughs> he said he thinks that they sh could should be able to ban it without too much trouble. Have you been around? We just did a whole segment on how they won't give <laughs> a single millimeter on any of this. Yeah, but he you hasn't mentioned talked to banning any his... You mentioned banning anything in their fucking... All but, over your shit about it. But yeah. he hasn't had his prayer warriors out praying for it yet. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> well, let's, let's hear it straight from his mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a 
gun owner. I have hunted. I have shot skeet. Oh, God, I, this is going to take four I, hours. I have gotten <laughs> awards when I was in the Marine Corps for shooting. I, 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 I've got no opposition whatsoever to shooting. But for heaven's sakes, I don't think that the general population needs to have automatic weapons. It just doesn't have to have uh, uh, Russian-built or Chinese-built uh, machine guns. It just doesn't. I mean, it's one thing to defend yourself with a pistol or a shotgun to hunt with. Something else to have. Uh, and I think we can ban those things without too much trouble. And they have what they call bump stock that was, you hit it, mm -hmm. it would all go automatic. And I mean, we can stop that. And then there has to be some medical uh, background check. If somebody is, is seeing a psychiatrist, is on medication, he or she needs to be prohibited from being turned loose to the general population. It's just got to be, you know, it's sensible. But as far as the right of the people to keep and bear arms, the Second Amendment, and we're all for it. That reminds me, that's one of the other arguments that I really despise is when people are like, oh, well, we need to do something about mental health issues here in the United States. It's not a problem with guns. We need to we need to address underlying mental health issues. Well, we do need an underlying issue yeah, of mental totally, health. Totally, totally separate issue. Not for this yeah. purpose, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a completely just, separate. Just for and, mental health we, sake. We do yeah. need. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yep. yeah. And in my mind, it's a completely separate and unrelated issue. For the most part, my problem with that argument is that it stigmatizes people mm -hmm. who go and seek medical attention yeah. for mental health issues that they have and makes them out to be bad people. When in reality, the, you know, 99.9% .9 of people with mental health issues don't go around fucking shooting other yeah. people and, and, and punishes them too. Right. Because he just said anyone who's seeing a psychiatrist. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's it, it. it's full stop you know he's just saying, if you're seeing what dude <laughs> yeah well it really bothered me when i when i I've, I've had clearances when i worked for contracting companies in the dod i i've, I've had god for you <laughs> <laughs> i haven't done that in a while <laughs> well god for you <laughs> uh but i've i've had security clearances mm -hmm. through the DOD and had to go through extensive background checks and everything. They and suck. It, and it, oh yeah, they're, they're really invasive and, and they want to know everything about you. But the part that really bothered me was that if you, if you said that you were seeking medical, if you were seeing a psychiatrist or psychologist or social worker for anything related to a mental health issue, that raised all kinds of red mm -hmm. flags for them. And I can understand why in some cases it would, but for so many positions, that was automatically disqualifying. That if you had any kind of mental health issue for which you sought medical treatment, you weren't ignoring it. Yeah. You realized there may be an issue. You were you doing were, the right thing. Yeah, you were doing the right thing in seeking medical counsel for this. And that would automatically disqualify you. Whereas if you realized you had a mental health issue and just never sought out any help for it, then you're a okay. You can fucking Yay. have that job. Nobody it's, it's on nobody's record anywhere that you sought medical attention or help from a therapist to help you alleviate those mental health issues. A schizophrenic with top secret clearance. <laughs> <laughs> that so that it, 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 it's bothered me for, for a really, really long time, way, yeah. way before it ever became mm -hmm. part of the gun debate. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, I, and there needs to be a little bit of nuance, right? I mean, there, there could be an almost, you know, there could, there could be, you know, some candidate who is just as qualified and just as healthy as mm -hmm. another candidate who just needs all, you know, maybe once a week they enjoy going to talk to this person about some stuff that happened when they were a kid that had nothing to do with them at all. And, you know, no, no, no fault of their own whatsoever. And they just, like to go and get that off their chest and you know, that's it. Then they're, they're done. That's it. You're out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I do have to correct Pat Robertson on one thing. What's that? <gasps> Say it ain't so. I know a fully automatic machine gun has not been used in any of these shootings because they are highly fucking regulated. Mm -hmm. They're really expensive and you have to go through FBI background checks to get one. It takes like six months to acquire one of these weapons and they're fucking expensive. 
So the people that usually have them are high end collectors mm. who just take them out to the gun range and shoot them. They don't, they sit locked up in fucking safes, which is great. Yeah. Because yeah. they're pulling them out of the market, out of circulation. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is they're not allowed to even make anymore. Oh, so a thought just occurred to me. Do you think that so many people mm. on the right who are total Second Amendment gun nut, flag waving, gun shooting in the air, Yosemite Sam types, <laughs> do you think that they're just terrified that there would be something disqualifying in their background that they shouldn't have a gun? And yeah. so the, they're the ones who are screaming loudest that you can't take my guns away from me. The people who absolutely shouldn't fucking have guns have the loudest voices. In saying that, don't take my guns away from me. This is just, yeah. you're just coming to take my guns. Well, my name's Billy, and I i don't want my gun taken away, because my friend right here next to me, name's Fred. Me and Fred <laughs> go shooting all the time. I know you can't see Fred. I know you can't see him, but he's my best shooting buddy, and I don't want my guns taken away. It's probably more like, shit, they're going to find out all three of my kids are from my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's disqualifying, though. <laughs> It's going to be weird if there has to come down because in Canada, most firearms you have to, you can only acquire them through, uh, uh, like a will. So if your father had a firearm mm. that you can't legally buy because they're restricted now, they're off the market. Mm. It can be willed to you and go through all the transfer process and, and, and background checking to you. If you are qualified to accept that gun through the will, you get it. If you have some bad history, guess what? You don't get it and that gun gets destroyed. So that would be weird if you're fucking your cousin and they go, Ooh, this is a tricky will. Who, uh, wait, does the sister, oh, wait, the sister is the son. <laughs> How's the sister the son ever oh, in any of those happen. scenarios? You've never heard of the story on my own grandpa? <laughs> it's a long twisted way of fucking in a family. <laughs> a long twisted way of fucking in the family? Yeah. I see. I, I had a friend that he must have been really high one night, and he actually went through the whole song. This is a song. Yeah. I'm my own grandpa, and he wrote yeah. down and made a family tree out of it and went, it is fucking possible. It's true. It is possible, yeah. <laughs> because it's fucked up, but yeah. it's possible to be your own grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's been a while since I've heard that song, but yes, it is absolutely entirely possible. I, for one, I'm glad that it's not popular anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we moved from news about Pat Robertson agreeing with us on some sensible restrictions on the types of weapons people can have to an evangelical pastor in Pennsylvania who was caught in a car with a tied up naked companion. He just likes to play. <laughs> can I, can I just make a physical judgment? He's kind of creepy. He is a bit creepy. And I think part of it's that he's a pastor and that just always bugs me out a little bit, but. Yeah. Is it because he's bald and wearing glasses? <laughs> <laughs> probably. That's probably it. You're right. I, I think you hit on something there. He's hey. kind of tall, too. He's but he tall. doesn't uh, have a curly mustache. True. So, so, so you never okay, shave right? the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to ask, what, did you bump your nose on I don't something? know what. It, it's a big old, I got a big old scratch there. I must have fucking hit it on something. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, I thought maybe you'd. I I bump into stuff all the time, and I don't remember your how face I into did something it. Or playing with the dog. It could or... probably playing with the dog. I don't even know. All I know is I grabbed my nose the other day and it was blood on my hand. <laughs> Weird. Oh well, I, it, yeah. Look, it just it looks a little painful. Oh, it's not. I didn't even know I did it. Oh, hmm. Well, good. Or how I did it. <laughs> uh, but apparently, uh, yeah, Gregory. His name is George Gregory. He's the pastor of Waterfront Christian Community Church. He claims to the police when they showed up, they were just playing. Gregory says what police say happened is not really what happened, but of course he does. This is what happened according to police. The police were called out to the scene for a suspicious vehicle parked outside of a home at 800 block of Beachland Street Friday night around 11.30 p.m. According to the police report, officers pulled up to the scene and saw two men in a car. The police said one man was in the back seat and another man in the front seat, totally naked, bound in nylon rope. When officers asked what was going on, Gregory told them they were just playing and he and the other man meet up from time to time to play with each other. Both men said that it was all do said that it was all doing was consensual. Yeah, that's, this that's is a weird fucking yeah. terribly. 
Uh, Gregory said that to the officer, he thought they were in a private place, but the officer said they were in a well-lit public place, one that's in clear view of several homes. Hmm. Gregory denies that the conversation ever happened. Well, I mean, there is an arrest report, I'm, I'm betting. Uh-huh. That's probably pretty good proof it happened. And a lot of cops nowadays are wearing body cams, and I think almost every squad car has a dash cam on it. Mm -hmm. So there's probably video evidence of this and <laughs> audio. <laughs> but if you just keep lying about it, it'll be fine. Okay. And, and he's a man of God, so surely... Well, I mean, these people always forget that cameras exist. Surely he wouldn't lie about it. No. According to local Pittsburgh TV affiliate KDKA, Gregory insists that this is what happened. Quote, I was counseling a young man with a drug problem. It did turn strange, but it wasn't my doing, okay? And I was adamant that I'm not participating in that way. And so that's when the police pulled up and they assume things, but I'm standing by my story. It's not true. According to Gregory, he has been working with the man for a few years and he and his wife have tried to get him help. I won't deny that he began to take his clothes off and propositioned me, but I will deny on a stack of Bibles with God as my witness that I did nothing. That night. <laughs> yeah, because that, that night, because busted. the police interrupted yeah. us. Uh, we have a video here of the news of the local news interviewing him at his home. And and just before the video starts, just know that as they do their media coverage, they play a video behind it yeah of the pastor giving some sort of sermon and so there's kind of always this like tone of him speaking behind and that's not like a flaw in our audio they just put they have yeah, two videos weird. going at the same it's time it's a little weird they left that audio in yeah it's a little the they should have yeah. just left it as cut the audio yeah. video video yeah. yeah and good evening i'm paul martino the pastor at the waterfront christian community church in west homestead has been charged with engaging in lewd behavior with a man inside a car on a public road. Tonight, he's denying those charges. Amy Wattis spoke with him in an exclusive interview. Amy, what do you have? Well, good evening, Paul. Pastor George Gregory is accused of engaging in lewd behavior inside of his car late last night in New Homestead. Someone saw the alleged behavior, then called 911. When police arrived... Does it look like the reporter wants to just break out into a full-on giggle? Like she's got this this funny smirk on her face the whole time she's Yeah, I don't speaking. know what that is. I don't know if that's like her <laughs> broadcaster voice face thing or something. Or if that 20 pound necklace is just j dragging her to laugh. <laughs> that could be. When police arrived, they say they found a two men in a car on Beachland Street. Inside, police spotted a man in the front seat completely naked and bound with nylon rope. Police say Gregory was in the back seat. When police asked Gregory what was going on, they say he told them, quote, we were just playing. The man in the front passenger seat told police the behavior going on inside of the car was consensual. Police questioned Gregory some more. They say he stated, quote, they meet up from time to time to play with each other. Police told Gregory he was on a public street in clear view of several homes, and police say Gregory replied by saying, quote, I know. We went to Gregory's home, and he says the police have it all wrong. Purpose? Were you in the car with someone else? I was... The other funny thing about this is that they've they've got him out on the front porch of his home, and he's got a glass screen door, like a mm -hmm. storm door, and I'm guessing it's his wife standing behind him with the door separating them. So, like, he walked outside and closed the door on his wife, who was just staring yeah. at the, at the oh, camera crew just, through the glass storm door. She's giving that thing a death stare. <laughs> counseling a young man with a drug problem okay and it did turn strange but it wasn't my doing okay uh and i i was adamant that i'm not participating in that way why was he in the back seat of his own vehicle and why did he have nylon rope in the back seat of his own vehicle <laughs> and why do you have to get naked to help someone with a drug problem yeah <laughs> 
I'm confused. And why were how, they alone? I and mean, why I'm, were they yeah. not, you know, in his living room if he was... Or, I mean, yeah, if he's just counseling someone with a drug problem, why are they meeting clandestinely yeah. in his car? On a Friday night in the right. back seat. <laughs> right. Or 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 if, if he wanted... If the drug guy wanted to be at that specific place, bring skinny Roseanne Barr with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never... I, <laughs> I've never been uh, to drug rehab. His wife does look like Roseanne Barr. <laughs> <laughs> Which is coming back. <laughs> uh, the show's coming back? Yeah. I saw they're doing like a reunion. They already filmed there. the show. Huh. A I, new season. Well, I saw that they were doing a reunion. I didn't know they were doing a new season. Oh, yeah. Huh. New season of Roseanne. She's fucking crazy. It tackles Trump. She's she's wackadoodle. Yeah. Have you ever heard? Like, she's big into conspiracy theories and shit. I haven't heard. I know she's a big Trump supporter. And she's from Utah. I know. Mm. Went to West High, I want to say. Well, she was in. She was the uh, what the the what do you call it? In the the Pride Parade where you're like the. the oh yeah, head, she was the Grand Marshal. The Grand Marshal, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Derailment okay. achieved. <laughs> and so, that's when the police pulled up and they assumed things. But it, what that, what yeah. else would they assume? You've it, got a naked, like totally fucking naked, tied guy. up. In your car, while you are in the back seat, you have rope in your car with which he tied himself up. Well, not himself. It was bullshit. You can't tie yourself up like that. Like what? Well, it doesn't. Like say even it. if his hands were tied. Yeah. How do you tie your own hands up? You need one hand to do the knots. <laughs> <laughs> the other, the other thing that is not necessarily being reported um, that would have made it much less of an assumption on the police's part. Is we don't know if these two men had erections when the police got there. If, if they did, there's there's a lot less assumption happening. <laughs> we do need an erection report. <laughs> Things, but I'm standing by my story. It's not true. But I, I'm standing by my story. It's not true. That sounds like I'm standing by my untrue story. Yeah. <laughs> I think Nixon said that. I'm I'm standing by my untrue story. <laughs> but I will deny on a stack of Bibles with God as my witness. Who the fuck cares? Yeah. I'll 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 say anything on a stack of fucking Harry Potter books. Yeah, because we've never seen any evidence of a pastor, preacher, mm. bishop, cardinal, pope. Ever fucking lying about anything, yeah. right? That's never ever happened. And and what does it fucking matter? He can he can do that right now for the media, and then just run inside and say, "Hey God, sorry about that, but you know why I had to do that." Yeah, sorry Perfect. I lied, yep. but you you understand, right? Yeah, it's all taken care of. And why do, why does it? You're back is, in. And is the number of Bibles somehow relevant to right. how much you can lie? Like if you if you swear on a Bible, then you can tell a whopper of a lie, but if it's a stack of Bibles, it's, then you can't. Like, it's more powerful. The number of Bibles is what really matters. Yeah, it's like when you hook a bunch of batteries up in series, they're way more powerful. <laughs> <laughs> the Tower of Bible. <laughs> that I did nothing. Well, you did something, right? I mean, he was a yeah. The fire yeah. chief with West Homestead says that Waterfront Christian Community Church has rented from the department for about five years now. That's the only affiliation that they have. No one from the congregation is a member of that fire department. Now, Gregory, he has been charged with indecent exposure and open lewdness. He was issued a summons. He says he hasn't received that yet. I'm very curious because I, when we watched this earlier, yeah. they said something about the fire department. I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about the fire department? That, they never, the, because they never address it in the story. No, they don't. Yeah. But that's where the church resides is inside the volunteer fire department. Yeah. So they, yeah, they, they're renting the building. Yeah. They rent out space on apparently Sundays, uh, from 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And that's that. That's a public building, though, right? Well, it's a volunteer fire department. I don't. I don't Vol know much volunteer about departments that. are still. Uh, Paid for by like local money, taxes. Yeah, yeah. So, so how is it possible? But he said that they're this... renting it, so they obviously have to be paying them for the services. That I mean, that's what rent is. 
She didn't say using it. She said renting so it. This so raises a whole bunch yeah. of questions. I mean, yeah. I mean, they'd have to they'd have to allow everyone, and then that you'd have to be sure that they were charging they were charging everyone the same. They're not giving a discount to the church, and then also who keeps the money because it's the building you're, itself is funded by the taxpayers, and now does the you think fire department have to go back into the local or does it go back into the city the coffers, city coffer yeah. for it? Yeah, that's, that's where I would assume it, the money would so go. So then, so then it has nothing to do with the fire department. It has to do with the city, city. officials. And the thing about most volunteer fire departments is they're not actually staffed the vehicles are there they go there for training mm-hmm. but most volunteer fire departments a volunteer firefighter mm-hmm. doesn't stay at the station yeah, yeah. in yeah. most places well but i mean this still raises all kinds of yeah separation issues for me because they have not that i have separation they have a sign or yeah they, <laughs> <laughs> well they have they have a permanent sign yeah Outside in the, ground, the volunteer fire department that says Waterfront post. Christian Community Church meets here all welcome and lists their days and times. So they have a religious sign dedicated in front of a to city the building. church. Yeah. So that's why I was wondering, is, is a volunteer fire department like not public, publicly funded? They are publicly not? funded, yeah. Huh. Hmm. That's very interesting. They just, the only difference between them and a normal fire department is a volunteer department doesn't get paid, uh-huh. or there are paid volunteers. They only get paid to go on call, so they're not paid 24-7. Mm-hmm. Huh. I wonder how many different public buildings now that if I started paying attention to that, atheists of Utah or American atheists could use. Schools. Schools Schools is a is a good one. Is a, yeah. a lot of public schools that will allow them to rent out spaces in it for religious services. Huh. I, and I also wonder if this, I mean, I'm not trying to defend them, but huh. being a smaller community, being like, hey, we only have like one or two places where we can meet. We up only got and... one outbuilding aside from the shitter. And so, <laughs> I mean, we got to compromise yeah. and work together here. And it's just the only the three other guys that show up to there. I mean, one one gets bondage Monday, one's bondage Wednesday, one's bondage Friday. <laughs> well, or you could say, well, since Pastor George Gagory isn't paying taxes, he can build his own fucking building. <laughs> but but where else do you want to go to learn your knots than a fire department? That's true. Huh. Well, they get pretty naughty in there. Yeah. Huh. I should know. All right. <laughs> uh, let's move on to couple more things and then we'll wrap it up okay this is sarah ponte rivera with the satanic temples gray faction you can learn more about gray faction at grayfaction.org or find us on our social media account on twitter and facebook and you are listening to the godless revolution if he's not going to open his mind then there's not a lot i can do for him i don't know maybe it's too late we're just going about this too abstract you know, I mean, think about it like Santa Claus. You don't explain to a kid the physics of some fatso cramming his ass down seven billion chimneys in a night. No, of course not. You, you just drive him to the mall, get his picture taken with some child molester, and eat a couple of his cookies before he wakes up. Ben wants to see God. Let's show him God. If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! All right, I think you had some uh, one final thing for us to discuss this evening. Yeah, this is going to be a great story for a rough reading night. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Iceland. <laughs> is drafting an anti-circumcision bill that would impose a six-year prison term on anyone guilty of removing part or all of the child's sexual organs. Good. Arguing the practice violates the child's rights. Yep. Jewish and Muslim leaders, however, have called the bill an attack on religious freedom. They're going to do an attack. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, these are people fighting for the right to freely cut apart infants' genitals. Uh-huh. Iceland would be the first European country to ban the procedure. The country is thought to have roughly 250 Jewish citizens and around 1,500 Muslims. Oh, well, Jesus. <laughs> 250 and 1,500. But the thing about the Jewish citizens is when it comes time for them to do a, a, a bar mitzvah, the kid and is- a bris. A bris, yeah. yeah. The kid is of the age to say, yes. I'm okay. Oh, at a bar mitzvah, yeah, they're 13, right? They're 13. So, they're not an adult. I mean, they're we, not an adult, we wouldn't, but yeah. we wouldn't let them do anything else. No, but they know what's going on. I mean, you can go get your ears pierced. 
I mean, it's not sure. the same as getting a, you know, a flesh cut off. Yeah. But I mean, and you're not indoctrinated your entire life necessarily into thinking this is something well, you, God desires for you to do to your penis. You, you, that is the case <laughs> there, though. You are indoctrinated that you well, need your, to your penis cut. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, MP Silja Dog Gunners Dotir. Say that again? Their names are always so fun to try to pronounce, right? <laughs> I'm sure it was the worst pronunciation they've ever heard. Of the Progressive Party, who introduced the bill at the start of the month, said, uh, we were talking about children's rights, not about freedom of belief. Quote, everyone has the right to believe in what they want, but the rights of the children come above the right to believe. Oh, so this is True. a law that's yeah. being passed yeah. to protect the child, not only in the womb, but out of the womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a novel idea. Iceland passed a law in 2005 banning female genital mutilation, and supporters of this move have compared it to that law. The latest bill says circumcision involves permanent interventions in a child's body that can cause severe pain. If it passes its first reading, the draft will... Uh, the draft law will go to a committee stage before it can come into effect. The Nordic Jewish communities issued a statement condemning the ban on the most central right in their faith. How dare you tell us that we can't mutilate our child's genitals? Yeah, also, also, we need that flesh. Also, it's the most central right of your faith? I disagree with that. Wouldn't, thought... the, wouldn't the most central right of your faith be... Be the diddle kids. No, be oh. be <laughs> the whole art of practicing your faith in general like you yeah the that's the main part of your faith is your faith itself not mutilating a child's genitals and wasn't there wasn't there something about like the chosen people thing and like a birthright <laughs> of some sort mm -hmm. isn't that a central right well, god can only see them if they have that bit of foreskin removed other than that they're completely <laughs> they're completely cloaked yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a different kind of loophole. They're they're hooded. They, they're totally incognito. Uh, incognito. The, the boys in the hood. Okay, well. <laughs> I was going to try to throw in a ninja joke, but I couldn't think of it. Uh, this this uh, super Jewy Jew guy says that uh, <laughs> you are about to attack Judaism in a way that concerns Jews all over the world. Which, Try two tears which in seems a bucket? weird. Fuck it. Yeah, I mean, it's a figurative attack, right? Yeah. But but they're literally attacking infants. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jewish campaign group um, Mila Mila UK stated that comparisons t with female genital mutilation are unwarranted, given that in the case of male circumcision, there is no recognized long-term negative impact on the child. Hmm. Other than that they've had their genitalia mutilated without their consent? Right. Well, or or but, that or that it's really tough to compare because you don't get to have two twenty year olds that or a twenty year old that has had both circumcision and not circumcision mm. to be able to compare. So right. But I would say in the woman's case it does take away the sensory side of it for them. Well, it, it does, does for, that for the males yeah, it does too. does for men as well. I mean, but you still keep a big chunk of it <laughs> <laughs> i mean <laughs> certain certain forms of fgm are objectively where they worse. just remove the clitoris uh, that's what i'm thinking well uh, there's also there there also are forms of it where they they're sewn up as well and there's a whole yeah, bunch of yeah, a whole bunch yeah. of other complications now, but is the sewing being considered into the mutilation side I, of I it i don't i don't know i think so i mean it's all part of that's reversible where the clitoris being removed is not reversible. Fair, but I mean, just as a, just as a, as it's, it's still fucked up. They shouldn't do oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, and uh, but yeah. in that sense though, like there's a way higher risk of infection, infection. Yeah. and yeah. all kinds of other yeah. complications because of menstruation and urination yeah. that there wouldn't be with the male circumcision. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree one hundred percent. I just didn't know if that was also included in their definition of. I don't know about theirs, but it is for me. I yeah. think it's definitely mutilation. Hmm. Uh, Imam. Ahmad Sadiq, who is not of the Jewish center. Really? <laughs> he's at the Islamic <laughs> Cultural Center of Iceland. Uh, also criticized the move. It's part of our faith, he said. It's something that touches our religion. Huh. And I believe that this is a contravention of religious freedom. Good. Yeah. It's not, you're, you're, you can practice your religion all you want. You can't 
do it to other people without their consent. Yeah. Like what if what if just random rape was part of his religion? Would he say, "Well, uh, you can't yeah. you can't stop me from randomly raping people, or or, or what randomly if was... chopping people's arms off? You're you're stifling my religious freedom. I can't just wander down the road and chop somebody's arm off. Come yeah. on now. Yeah, yeah. If it was full castration. Yeah. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just partial. Yeah. <laughs> that, that would not be for that. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing how stuff like that even becomes an ingrained practice to where we can get people that don't even recognize it as a, a mutilation. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and this is assuming that that child that's a few days old wants to be a part of that religion. That too. I mean, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of, there's all kinds of problems. I know when, uh, when we had, um, our baby recently, mm -hmm. there was a lot of concern about that whole thing. And, uh, ev even statements like, well, he's already going to have, he's already going to have one issue. We should, we shouldn't make him have two yeah, fucking that people, people are going to make man. fun of him about. God damn it. Yeah. How many kids in the locker room are going to look at his penis and go, that looks weird. Yeah. How many kids in the locker room are looking at our kids' penises? You're too embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, and who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe his generation will be the generation that. It's odd to be it's, circumcised. Yeah, that it's weird to be circumcised now, and everybody's going to look at every, all the circumcised kids and go, Jew, 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 Jew. <laughs> <laughs> One, Jew, three. <laughs> or, or maybe uh, they'll be the generation that's just like, who fucking cares? Yeah. yeah. yeah why the fuck? That would be nice. Why would your, why would your great designer make a, make a baby boy with extra with, flesh with extra foreskin that you have to later cut away like that's super intelligent design right, right? that 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 he then commands you to do of, to your own kid mm -hmm. with no expertise no nothing you know i mean in the early days yeah. just get a rock and cut that bit off maybe it's like an abraham type thing like not kill your kid but cut off his tip yeah just testing testing yeah. their faith yeah make sure like you must cut their all commitment tips. to god yeah. it's like how many how many fucking fever dreams and psychopaths were at the heads of early religions that succeeded oh, you know and that's all of this stuff is coming down from one fucking crazy bastard and everyone's like no that's totally normal because everyone else has done it you know what i mean yeah mm -hmm. which is which is funny because even when i was getting uh some of those questions about uh, what we were going to do with ours mm. all of a sudden everyone's jumping off the cliff if their friend says so <laughs> you know what i mean it's like they've been saying for years like oh well just because you're you know if your friend tells you to you're gonna j well that's what your fuck that's your argument that's your uh -huh. whole fucking argument uh -huh. well, he's gonna get made fun of if it well you just said he's gonna get made fun of anyway so you know but why add two why add another yeah, no I, i'm not you know there's Plus, there's a whole bunch of other shit going on. Well, know? we're not going to make him a Mormon, so. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he's already got that. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I asked, I asked the doctor straight up. I just said, well, is there any, is there any reason specifically related to the defect that would make circumcision, um, very advantageous for him in some way? Mm -hmm. And they said, not really. It's just a personal, personal pre preference. Personal Case preference. Closed. Yeah. So I said, okay, well. Then if it's just an issue of that, I don't have consent, so I think we'll just not do it. Yeah. What? Why do they have such a huge problem with allowing the child to wait until they're of age to make their own informed consent as to whether they want their genitalia mutilated? Mm -hmm. yeah. You should have asked me if you got 10% off if you cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a dick move. <laughs> Then you tell uh, him keep the tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a good line of jokes. Well, thank you. That, was, uh, yeah, that, was, that wasn't too bad. Uh, it's about time to wrap up the show, but before we do, I want to make sure that we thank our Patreon supporters. That would be Michelle Short. Christy Kalbach. Oh, fuck. Camille Borowski. <laughs> New Mania. <laughs> Alan Firth. Gay theist? Larry Wilson. Dr. Dan, Matt's boss from the 2SC podcast, to whom we pledge loyalty. Janet Uter. Let them eat coffee. Stephen Andrews. Marius Kotbuchakowski. Rob Otto. Vanessa Lowe. That's a new supporter. It Yay! is. Well, I don't know if you're saying new this week or not. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa what? Okay, we're good. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa what? <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa what? Yay! Utah Outcasts. 
Tim Jacobson, Matt Tuller, Megan Kennedy, Andrew Vodapich, Brandy Hamrick, Jeremy Goodson, sorry, Angelica <laughs> Person. I was just stomping on it. Wes Aaron or Wesley Aaron? My apologies. Purple Dragon and Taylor Grin. Yay. Thank you all very much. We really appreciate it. If you value the show and the things that you're hearing and you're enjoying it, we would really appreciate it if you helped us continue the show and improving it all the time. For you, our dear listeners, if you like the content, you, you, you appreciate what we're doing. Hell, kick us a dollar an episode, right? That's, that's just a good thing to do. And then it helps us buy new equipment and continue improving the show and pay for hosting and pay for whatever all of the other stuff that I we mean, have the, the four hours of travel that we have every week <laughs> yeah yeah all of that kind of stuff it would be greatly appreciated if uh you wanted to contribute to the show we would we would thank you a whole lot every show and also if you want to send us in articles for us to read and get to like tonight we read articles from alan firkinoff yes Yes, we did. Thank you very much, Alan. That's two weeks in a row that we yes. actually included a story from Alan after several weeks of not. Yeah. <laughs> because we get busy with other stuff. Um, also wanted to mention that this is episode 195, which means we have five episodes left until our 200th episode. Yeah. And that's also the week of my birthday. So send us some good shit. The, this week is your birthday? No, or the, the 200th? 200th. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. So for the Patreon, portion of the show tonight we're going to give our listeners a taste of some stuff we have from past episodes some oh, yeah. clips yeah some funny bits matt's been working hard putting together a little bit of a highlight reel for a time in march when we will not be doing an episode mm -hmm. and so we're going to release a hopefully a nearly full-length episode of highlights from the last two years but for Patreons tonight, we have a sneak preview of a part of that. Yes. I also wanted to mention that as part of the 200th episode, uh, we want to hear from you, our dear listeners and fellow podcasters. If you have anything that you would like to promote, send it into us. Tell us congratulations on the 200th episode. Send us a clip that we can include promoting your podcast your blog whatever you would like and we will be happy to play that for you uh i want to make sure that we build a larger community around this show everybody else's show and we support each other in doing this because it's free media that we're providing to people for the most part uh, lots and lots of people listen to the show who don't pay and i would like to introduce them to your shows your creations the things that you like the things that you do and point them in your direction so that they can also find your content and start listening to you if you would like or reading your blogs and reading your memes and stuff like that that would be awesome yeah we're all in this together and we need to stick together and work together and build this up together and continue resisting and fighting and making the world a better place for everybody else so send us in your Comments, thoughts, congratulations, what have you for the 200th episode, and we would be happy to play them. Uh, the best way to do that would probably be to record it and then send it to us in an email to godlessrevolution at gmail.com. Or you can call and leave us a voicemail message at 33081 Rebel. Yes. And we'll be, we'll be really excited to have your stuff and to play it on future episodes. So we look forward to hearing to <laughs> we look forward to hearing to you. Yes. <laughs> and after from the from the for beginning, we go now to the endings. Oh, Alpha well, and well said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for listening, everybody. And so until next week, crucify your parishioners. <laughs> Leave a review to achieve your knot tying badge. <laughs> <laughs> and, and rate the show five times a day toward the gun show. <laughs> Pen, pineapple, pineapple, pen. Pen, pineapple, pop. <laughs> pen, pineapple, pop. Pen, pineapple, apple, pen. Happy birthday! Come on down here. I'm gonna stop that there. Make a, make a move across the screen a slower. I saw China Dave sent us a, an email saying, even though China Dave, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even even though I was wrong, I was right. <laughs>
<laughs> I saw China Dave send us an email. <laughs> oh, you went and saw Pink Panther? Or not Pink Panther? <laughs> Fuck. I'm fucking tired. 18 incidences involving guns at or near a school this year so far. I think so incidents far. would work. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that would be the more... Yeah. What did I say? Incidences. incidences. Oh, did I? Incidences. At least I didn't say incense. Is... <laughs> Incenses.